Hey YouTubers, Shell Sullivan here. Welcome back to my channel. I've seen some blow dart designs on the internet, so I, I thought I'd give it a try. And so here's my video. The blow gun itself is pretty self-explanatory. The hard part is making the darts. And so here's my tutorial video for how I make blow gun darts for my homemade blow gun with hardware stored parts, of course. I've seen a lot of homemade blow guns on the internet, and so I'm interested in making one. And so, you just go to the hardware store, bought some uh, Schedule 40 half inch PVC, cut it to about four and a half foot, put a coupler on it, blow gun done, finished. That was easy. So, the next step, which is a much more difficult step, is making the darts. And so I've got two options here I'm gonna be using. Bamboo skewers, thin metal rod, um, you probably recognize where this came from. Yes, it's half of one of the steel rod flags, marker flags for your yard. And uh, both of these were suggested on the internet. They both make excellent darts. So my method for making the, the tailpiece is a little different than other people's. Take a cup or a round object with two inches of diameter, put it on a piece of paper bag from the grocery store, uh, draw out a circle, cut the circle in half, make a notch in the middle. We're going to use the hot glue gun. We have our uh, pieces of PVC tubing with a half inch inner diameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these half discs of paper and we're going to curl it, keeping the bottom level into a cone. And we're going to fit it into the piece of pipe. that we're using for our blowgun. That makes it fit the inner diameter of the pipe perfectly. Take a gander inside to make sure that it's centered. You might have to reach in and adjust it a little bit to make sure it's centered. And then we look closely on the inside of this cone and you'll see where the, where the inner flat meets the next loop in the cone. And we're just gonna put just enough hot glue in to tack it. That's all we want to do, just one little drop right across the inner loop of that um, comb. And we got to let that cool. Okay, that's sufficiently cooled so it's solidified. If you're, here's a tip for you, if you're quickly, you know, working with a single, you know, prototype, first test of something, pop your hot, glue, hot glued items in the freezer, helps um, accelerate the process of cooling. And now what we're going to do, we've got our inner diameter hot glued to that to match the inner diameter of our tube. We're just going to finish the outside with just a little bit. Don't overdo this because it just a tiny little drop. This is going to be covered up in the last step, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be strong. It just, we just want to get that flap out of the way. And as I'm working, I like to reinsert it back in the tube and make sure I have it anything you want to be careful with the tube at this point so you don't lose the roundness of the cone shape okay so now we've got a cone made out of a disc and we're gonna choose our choose our weapon here let's make a steel wire one first This is exactly half of one of those flag rods. So you can buy a pack cheap and you can get two out of each flag. The, the final position of this, I want it to be about right here. So with uh, maybe half an inch showing at the back. So I'm gonna take note visually where the comb meets the uh, steel wire and I'm gonna put me some hot glue right there in that spot. 
Uh, not a whole lot, just a little ring, and just kind of roll it around so you don't spill it. There we go. It looks pretty even, and then we're just going to very gently pull that bead down into the cone, like so. Spin it around a little bit, make sure you're close to center. Pop it back in our tube. It's really good. At this point, we can kind of like give it a little rotation, make final adjustments. Make sure everything looks centered. All right, and we have the tendency to want to move on to the next step, but this really does need to cool. It's stiff enough already, so it'll hold that little piece of tube up, but. We want it cool completely, so let's give it a couple minutes at least in the freezer. Okay, that is sufficiently cooled. It's nice and stiff. And uh, remember, those were all just kind of tacked. So we're tacking the center, then we're tacking the outside, and then we're just kind of tacking that cone right there. Now, you do want to get enough hot glue in that cone so that you've got a nice and firm amount up behind that because this part of the can sometimes bottom out in your target and get damaged pretty easily so you want that nice and firm in fact you want it firm and fully filled with hot glue all the way up to the to the top but with not spilling over this part takes a little practice and if you're good with a hot glue gun it'll be easy but just don't overfill it it's better to just underfill it and come back later so we're just Squeezing and rotating and making sure that all settles out. Look what happened to my tack on the outside. Came loose from the heat. It's no big deal though. You don't want to rush this part because if you do you might get like a whole lot of bubbles in the glue. And that's not you don't want that. You want like a nice firm inner core of hot glue. I'm going to stop there. I'm not quite to the to the top but I'm going to make sure that that gets good and round. By placing it back into my pipe. Now that's really softened up everything in there again so it's um everything's sort of melty again so we'll need to make sure it stays on center <clears throat> but that's good though it gives you a chance to make sure everything is nice and centered all right so that step is now solidified so now it's quite firm it's a little that loosened up on the outside but it didn't matter it's going to be covered up in the last step. Look at that though, it fits perfectly. But, as anyone who's worked with hot glue knows, that that is actually going to shrink over the next little bit. It's, I mean, it was in the freezer for a couple minutes and it's still a little warm to the touch, but nice and firm. But anyway, we're going to finish off this. You kind of want it really just like a level at the very top so that that final outside rim edge has support behind it so it stays nice and circular and always fits the inner diameter of your blow gun. There we go. Now, you see that now if I've kind of got it right to the edge bit there that's buried. Just kind of let it drip a little bit. There. Nice. You don't want to get any hot glue gun on the inside of uh, your jig or your gun for that matter. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty good. 
So that top part is kind of cool. With some practice, you can do all that in, in one step. Instead of two. And it's still a little warm, so we want that outside edge to get to stay nice and round. Stick it in there and kind of rotate a little bit. Okay, we're going to let that cool. Okay, so this was this is where my first idea ended, and and I blew the darts at this point. You know, I was using kind of inside box for a target, and they worked really well. Um, but the next day, I noticed that they they shrunk and they cooled completely, and then they didn't they didn't fit the tube nicely. They sort of slid through when I dropped them in, and so masking tape. Just about one piece of masking tape actually fits it perfectly back to the inner diameter of my Schedule 40 half inch PVC tube. So we only need about that much. And to start it at the bottom. It'd be nice to kind of you know kind of cover up, protect that piece of cardboard paper there. And it's going to um, cover that flap there too. That's a little loose. No big deal. And that increases that diameter. Just one tape thickness is perfect. Just kind of roll that. Make sure it stays nice and round. Trim it. Leave enough so that you can fold over. Fold that over like so. nice and round. Now it's suitable for outdoors. It'll last. Sharpen the tip on your grinder. Nice. When it fits perfectly, you'll feel it. When it stops, you'll feel it just grab a little bit. But then when you start to pull it, you'll feel it just transition to a slide and you can kind of twist it around in there smooth it out the outside make sure it's nice and so when you drop it in your blowgun it won't drop through you know you push it that much in and you could run with your you know it ain't going it ain't going to fall through it's going to stay in there until you're ready to to blow. Now the big one, you may wonder what I do with it. Well, let's do the same thing. I get that made, I get this made, and then I use this for the bamboo shoots to kind of make sure that it's centered down there and make sure it's centered at the top. So creating a jig would be a good idea so that you can make the process quicker and easier and more accurate but that's very durable I think it's a lot better than the uh, the wire nut version um, the bead version nothing to got to do beads the, you know everybody's got their own way but uh, I think these these are working really good for me and I leave the uh, the bamboo ones the same the process is the same you just use a bigger piece of pipe to Make sure you're centered. Here's what the final products look like. Just through these. I've sharpened that on the grinder now. These have been shot quite a bit. In fact, this one has been hit by another one. I stacked them up like so. Um, and it, uh, it heals pretty nicely. I've actually had one, a couple of them uh, in, my, in my, first, my first round went 
through and they sort of heal up. You can just kind of press it, the tape and the glue back down and um, it smooths back up. So these have been quite durable. The metal ones, you know, they get a little crooked the more you shoot them, but you can eye them down, hold it by the little stem in the back and spin it, look down the shaft and find out where it needs to be straightened. The bamboo ones, extremely light. That metal one, the smaller metal one weighs easily more than this big skewer does. I think that's why they have to stay so long. If you cut these bamboo screws short, then they'll end up being too tail heavy. So you want the center of gravity to be up in front of the, the center of drag. So the center of drag on this is just right around here probably so that the wind pulls it straight again. But if you make it too short, then the center of mass gets out in front uh, or the center of drag it's out in front of the center of mass and that'll cause it to flip and sometimes go heavy in first. But these are the end results and I'll show you how they fly now. Get the can. Oh, close. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you decide to build this blowgun in the darts, be safe and responsible with it, please. Um, if you like that video, please click like on my YouTube channel. It really helps out a lot. If you uh, think a friend might like to check that out, share it. Uh, share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube, any other platform. If you got something to say, then say it down below. I'd be glad to hear your suggestions and, and comments. And if you like what you saw and you want to see more, then please subscribe. But only if you think that I earned it.